So in 1919 and 1924, the Prince of Wales visited the United States and had a profound impact on men's style. His pictures were in the top magazines, in the newspapers. Everybody was analyzing his looks, the image, the presentation, his outfits, and how he put them together. Fast forward 100 years, we've got another Englishman on the cover of magazines making all the news when it comes to styles. I'm talking about Harry Styles. Now, whether or not you like or dislike the way he puts outfits together, the way he wears clothing that was predominantly for women, the way that he wears makeup, what you have to acknowledge is the fact that he is having an impact on men's style. All of this leads to the question, how did rock stars, how did famous musicians end up wielding so much power when it comes to image, when it comes to style, when it comes to influencing what people wear? And irrespective of how long music's been around, it's considered a cultural universal. This means in all cultures around the world, it has emerged independently and is viewed as just something that human beings do. So it doesn't matter if you're studying, you know, ancient Peru, you're going over to India, you're studying ancient China, you're over in East Europe studying the early civilizations there, North America, you will find down the Aboriginals over in Australia had different musical instruments that they would use and that they would bring into. It was so deep in their culture, you couldn't separate it from the stories that they would tell into the gods that they would worship. And as it had such strong cultural meaning, the men and women that played the instruments performed in the dances, they would oftentimes have elaborate outfits that were used to enhance the music, to put people into the right state of mind, to be able to tell a story, to be able to get a point across. And if you've ever looked at a live performance, you know it's so much more than just the sound. It's the visuals and it's a full on experience. And that's what they did to be able to get across the meaning and the emotion that was tied to the notes that they were playing. So for tens of thousands of years, musicians are having minimal, if any, real impact on style and fashion. What changed? Well, in 1895 over in Italy, Marconi invented the radio. Now, many of you guys know for 90, 100 years, they were making advancements in that direction, so I hate to give it to one guy. But he started broadcasting, sending out these messages, and for the next 30 years in its infancy, it really didn't take off too much, but in the 1920s, in the 1930s, definitely, all of a sudden, the rise of radio increased the reach of people that played instruments. Wait a minute. How did radio have an impact on how a musician would impact style? I mean, you can't even see them. Yes, you can hear them, but what does that have to do with anything? Well, as you know, the radio grew in the 1920s, 1930s, and all of a sudden you were able not just to reach a hundred or a thousand, maybe at a live performance, you were able to reach tens of thousands, then hundreds of thousands, and then millions. And all of a sudden, these musicians, these artists, whether they were the best, whether they were just promoted very heavily, all of a sudden they became people of status. They became somebody that others looked up to. Other people wanted to be like, other people wanted to see. And when they saw them, they wanted to copy. Now, of course, the sales and marketing community who ruined everything picked up on this pretty darn quick. And they not only had your favorite musicians getting and speaking and advertising and talking about their products, but they also said, you know what, we can bring in people that are natural voice artists, people that can pronunciate exactly how we want it, sound like we want people to sound. And that's where the radio voice came from. And it continued like this until the 1950s. So what happened in the 1950s? Well, first up, we are fresh off World War II. You've got a lot of people that had money saved up. And so there is a lot of free flowing money. The economy is doing very well in the 1950s. And you've got a rising class of young people that are looking for something. And guess what's popped up? The television. Now, it's not often that we can pinpoint an exact place in time in which history changed, but we're able to do that. On September the 9th, 1956, a poor boy from Tupelo, Mississippi, appeared on The Ed Sullivan Show, and he sang some of his most popular songs and started what is now viewed as one of the most powerful influencer movements ever, and that is the power that musicians can have on young people. Now, at the time, it was measured that 80% of televisions that were owned in the United States were tuned in to this show and over 60 million people watched this young musician get up on the stage, sing, perform, and they paid attention to everything from the way that he dressed to the words that he said. In fact, after that broadcast, his unreleased album went on to pre-sell over a million copies, something unheard of 
at that time and period. And Elvis was just the beginning. Less than eight years later, in February of 1964, we had the Beatles jump over the pond and appear on the Ed Sullivan Show in New York City three times in the month of February. They would go on to sell that next month over 2.5 million albums and have a huge, profound impact on the culture, on the look, on the style. All of a sudden, you started seeing hairstyles. The Beatles at the time, nowadays it's common, but this, this mob hairstyle, yeah, it was a big deal. All of a sudden, people looking at their shoes, looking at everything about these guys and trying to imitate it. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, do me a favor and smash the like button. Seriously, when you engage with these videos, you'll let the YouTube algorithm know that, hey, Antonio put a lot of work into this and I want to show him a little bit of love and this will reach more people. And I appreciate that because come on, we want to help more guys dress like rock stars. Well, at least guys that uh, have the confidence, right? So at this point in the video, let's look at the rock stars who over the last 60 years have had the biggest impact on men's fashion. Starting this list off, we've got to talk about the king. Between the 1950s and the 1960s, he sold over 260 million albums. And can you imagine somebody dressing up like Elvis and not pulling off that pompadour? But it was in his later years, the 1960s, 1970s, that all of a sudden we saw the bling. We saw the attention. We saw him wearing, yes, pink full-on outfits at a time when it was not popular to wear anything like this. He realized, hey, this is a stage. I'm going to own it. He's wearing just star-studded outfits with tons of bling, tons of shine on them. Yes, it was all about grabbing attention, but it started the trend with other artists that went on for another 15 years. And in the immortal words of Nudie Cohen, it was better to be looked over than to be overlooked. And what a lot of people forget is that Elvis popped up in a number of movies. And yes, right here in Blue Hawaii, wearing that Aloha shirt, all of a sudden he made it trendy again. Let's not forget about leather. Elvis loved leather. He would have a full on leather outfit or just simply bring in the jacket. He loved the way it felt, the way it made him look. And to this day, we can thank Elvis for helping to popularize leather among men. And by the way, if you're in the market for a leather jacket, you should check out my friends over at JL Rocha. I'm going to bring up some of their jackets right here throughout this video. I've been wearing their jackets. They didn't sponsor this video, but they are great friends of mine and they are having an awesome deal. Guys, it is such a great deal. I cannot mention it in this video because if they, you know, they will not keep it forever and it will disappear. They've got limited runs on jackets and I don't want to have to go back and re-edit this video two years from now. But I will say, if you're watching this now, Go check out that link in the description. Go over to Jay Orocha. Look at all the different styles and use that discount code. This is an amazing discount code. It will not be around forever. Awesome company. And uh, yeah, it's not sponsored. I just simply love them and uh, enjoy wearing their jackets. Next up, no surprise, we've got the Beatles, who in the 1960s sold over 380 million albums. Guys, it's hard to fathom. I mean, the impact that these guys had, not just on fashion and style, but society as well. So first up, talked about it their hairstyles. These mop tops, again, now we take it for granted that they are everywhere, but this was a style at the time that was very different and it created a lot of fashion trends. But let's also look at their collarless suits. Let's look at the fun that they had in the late 1960s and throughout the 1970s, just, yeah, bringing in all different types of psychedelic colors, all these different types of looks, which were really pushing the boundaries. And all of a sudden they were making it more acceptable for an entire generation, entire culture to embrace this new look. Another band from the 1960s that continues to play and play. We're talking about the Rolling Stones. They had 110 million albums sold in the 1960s. And this was the time that Mick Jagger, that Keith Richards, these guys were sending the signal of rebel cool from their leather jackets to the shoes that they were wearing to their hairstyles. Even on his wedding day, Mick Jagger is having fun here with Bianca with a look that would set style trends and establish him as a fashion icon. And of course, let's not forget the Doors, who from 1965 to the early 1970s were leaders in the counterculture movement. These guys arrested multiple times and always looking good with that great looking hair. These guys helped train transition into the 1970s and the looks that were brought about then. Next up, let's talk about Led Zeppelin, another band that transitioned from the 1960s strongly into the 1970s. We're talking 140 million albums sold in the 1970s. I think close to 60 million sold in the 1960s. These guys had tons of iconic looks. You talk about just an I don't give a damn type of look, wearing the jackets without the shirts, having fun with jewelry, with the wild hair, still at the same time really bringing in 
a little bit of, I would say, a controlled hippie type of vibe here. At the same time, rocking out and uh, yeah, creating their own style. Next up, we've got the Eagles selling over 160 million albums in the 1970s. This was the height of the band from California to Colorado. These guys were in their denim, not ha not given a damn with the overall, you know, keep up of their hair, whether it be on their faces or on their head. These guys had this nonchalant type of look of, hey, I'm here and you got to deal with it. And I know for me personally, absolutely love the Eagles. Got lots of great memories driving from Texas to California and uh, just driving through, you know, areas like Winslow, Arizona. My dad was a huge fan of them. And I'm like, wait a minute. We just heard that one of the songs that we've listened to repeat like 50 times as the air conditioner isn't working. Windows are down and you're just dying in 120 degree Fahrenheit weather. Uh, but yeah, good memories. Now, a couple other bands on here. Queen. 130 million records sold. Elton John, another 130 million records sold. Both of these guys and their bands having influence, having impact on all of a sudden, people don't really mind dressing a little bit differently. You see someone like Elton John, you admire his music. You just see how outlandish he can be on stage, having fun with all his different glasses and it looks you know, like, you know what? I can bring that into my style. Queen getting up there just simply, you know, with that simple undershirt and just letting it rip up. Uh, just an amazing influence on style. Oh, and let's not forget about Bob Marley, just over a hundred million albums sold, but it was little things like his wearing of Adidas and the M65 military fatigue jacket. So this was one that we normally associate with dictators or military personnel wearing it. Here he is, he's stuffing the pockets with ganja and having a good time. It really just all of a sudden changed the approach and uh, a lot of people, yeah, started having fun with that now iconic men's jacket. Now the 1980s dominated by Michael Jackson with 180 million albums sold. Prince, over 90 million albums sold. Brands like U2, all of a sudden at the forefront and bringing in a little bit of European wear. But think about it, Michael Jackson, that red leather jacket with that white glove, just with the socks, it had a little bit of a shine, the way he was able to move across the floor. All of a sudden, kids around the United States are in the, around the world are imitating these looks, imitating all of a sudden, if you wear a jacket like that, yeah, trying to be like Michael Jackson. But there were a lot of people that probably brought in a little bit more of fun, iconic looks because they realized the power of actually being able to move and to be able to show off a little bit of glitz at the same time, having a unique look that uh, just sets you apart from the crowd. Now, Prince probably deserves his own video. The guy was not only a music icon, but a style icon. And, you know, he just played all of these different, I mean, just incredibly skilled. He's actually only lived a few hours from my house. He was from Minnesota. Not a lot of people know that he actually went back there, lived. I always find that really interesting. Just some guy from the Midwest that was able to put all this together. But there are some great videos out there when him and Rick James would compete for, you know, d different audiences and perform. But uh, apparently Prince uh, was a bit of a diva, which makes sense. But you look at the guy, I mean, he was really a small person. Yet, the way he dressed, the way he commanded attention with whenever he would enter the room or at least try to try to grab it according to, uh, you know, Rick James. Um, point being is that this guy knew how to command attention with his looks and with his image. And you can bet he had an impact on thousands and thousands of young men in terms of how they would experiment and try something new when either they're up on stage or they're just simply wanting to adjust the way that they present themselves to the world. Transitioning from the 1980s to the 1990s, we've got Metallica. Guns N' Roses. Metallica selling over 130 million albums in those two decades. Guns N' Roses selling over 110 million albums in those two decades. Both of these bands, iconic looks and affecting the way that their fans and those who just simply enjoyed the music all of a sudden started dressing. I don't know about you guys, but I can't even imagine going to a concert, not seeing him dressed in this manner. I mean, it's all about the expectation. And if you're going to go to the one of these concerts, a Metallica concert, it's pretty much expected. You are going to wear a dark color. You're going to wear black because that is, yeah, it's just simply what you do when you go to a Metallica concert. Next up, let's talk about Nirvana and Garth Brooks. You didn't expect that pairing, did you? So Nirvana sold about 80 million albums in the 1990s in their very short period that these guys were around. And Kurt Cobain obviously started the grunge movement, which carried on by Pearl Jam and a number of other bands. But Garth Brooks sold 110 million albums. Not a lot of people know how much of an impact he not only had on the country scene, but outside the country scene. In fact, this guy would show up and he would just fill up huge concerts 
over in uh, New York City, of all places. I mean, they couldn't believe how this guy could get people in their seats. But he did bring in certain styles, certain looks. Yes, we got the hat. You've got the actually the cross checkered shirts right there made out of cotton, the jeans and Wranglers and stuff. But there was just more. There was simply a, a simple type of style and image that this guy was bringing, not only with his fans, but people that were enjoying simply his music and all of a sudden would be introduced to, uh, yeah, guys like Chris Gaines. Uh, not even, not even going to go there. And of course, we can't forget the Backstreet Boys selling over 75 million albums. These guys did start a number of trends, a number of different looks. Some of them maybe you don't agree with. Point being is these guys were having an impact into the 2000s. And all of a sudden, we started seeing the rise of guys like Eminem and all of the trends that he started. Linkin Park, Coldplay, Justin Timberlake, who actually still today I find is an amazing style icon. I really do like actually his background. His father was a banker. This guy has brought in, he's really pioneered and pushed a lot of different looks. Uh, but even bands like Nickelback for a while. Yes, I know they're one of the most hated bands, which is strange how that started, but there's a whole story on it. Go ahead, look it up. But uh, Nickelback, yeah, it had its fans and it had its looks. And uh, I don't know, were you a part of Nickelback? Are you part of the Nickelback tribe? Let me know in the comments below. Don't be afraid. Now, over the last decade, we've had guys like Justin Bieber pop in, and whether you like him or not, he's had impact. Let's look at Bruno Mars. Was hot for a while, kind of disappeared, but still, I always liked his looks. And of course, we've got the meme king known as Drake. It seems like every time I see a meme, Drake is a part of it. So with all that being said about history, let's talk about the future. Who are going to be the next style icons for the next decade? Guys like Harry Styles. Now, I know a lot of you guys find his looks polarizing, but I have to admit that I do like his music. And yes, you guys can probably stop watching my videos now and tune me out, unsubscribe. But I will admit I am a closet Harry Styles music fan. Now, his styles and his image, I think he's really just pushing boundaries to get attention. But I think a few things may pick up over time. What about Machine Gun Kelly? I mean, yeah, you may not like a lot of his looks. They're a little bit outlandish, pretty much over the top. But the guy is a performer. Or what about Little Nas? What do you think? Yeah. Really pushing the boundaries here. Not my cup of tea. I'm not really into that advanced fashion stuff, but you got to admit the guy really pushes boundaries. ASAP Rocky, anyone? Kanye West? Yeah. This guy, you know, he's what, worth a billion dollars now? So I don't know. And who, how could I argue with that? Bad Bunny? Tyler, the creator. I maybe. So what video to watch next? How about one of the most iconic looks ever to come out of North America? What am I talking about? No, not the Mohawk, although that one is awesome. I'm talking about the cowboy, the cowboy hat, Western boots, the jeans, everything that goes with it. Guys, I explain how you can actually learn some style tips from cowboys and how you can incorporate that style into your wardrobe. Curious? Find out guys how to do it in this video right here.